I'm going to share with you some of the things we're seeing here for the first time. These new images of the frantic moments when police in Annapolis rushed to evacuate workers from that building under siege by Capitol Gazette shooting suspect Jared Ramos. And there's also this new video of Ramos being carried away uh, by police in handcuffs. A judge denied his bail yesterday, saying that he's likely a danger to the community. I want to share with you, too, today's front page of the Capitol Gazette. It says, Suspect Swore Oath to Kill, an excerpt from today's op-ed written by a former columnist and editorial board member John W. Vandekamp says this, quote, Last week, French President Emmanuel Macron laid a wreath at the former offices of Charlie Hebdo, a satirical newspaper whose editors, cartoonists, and staff, 12 in all, were gunned down by two Muslim brothers during an editorial meeting after the, publish, or the paper published cartoons unfavorable to the Prophet Muhammad. I am Charlie Hebdo became a worldwide slogan to protest these senseless killings targeting a newspaper. Now we have our own Charlie Hebdo, and it's shameful, and we need to react with an I am Annapolis and I am the Capitol campaign. Well, one of the lawyers who represented the Capitol Gazette uh, in Jared Ramos's defamation suit said he was full of simmering anger. And with me now is that attorney, Zach Shirley. Zach, uh, good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So you describe Ramos as unforgettable uh, during this trial. What do you recall most about him during that time? I, I understand you've talked a lot about his appearance. Well, I, I, I talked about his appearance at first. He, he had a very long goatee, as I recall, he, he, uh, and, and long hair when he walked into the courtroom. Uh, he was unforgettable, though, not for his appearance, but for what transpired over the course uh, of his case. He started out uh, what, in, with what appeared to be just a kind of a standard complaint that he felt he'd been misrepresented in the newspaper. But by the end, between his Twitter feed and his kind of long rambling filings with the court, uh, that's what made him unforgettable. It was just the, the obsession that he had with this case and with this paper. Uh, a reporter, uh, Jane Miller, who uh, works at uh, one of CNN's affiliates, WBAL, uh, tweeted out uh, her conversation or part of it with a woman who says she was stalked by Ramos. Um, and she said that, quote, he will be your next mass shooter, that uh, woman who says she was stalked. Um, I read that the, the people that you represented as, at this paper had absolutely they were in, in fear of danger. Now, obviously, justifiably, based on what we know now, but what... What made them so afraid? Well, I, I will say that um, every morning when I walked into my office, the first thing I did was check Mr. Ramos's tweet feed hmm. uh, because there wasn't really a week that went by that someone wasn't targeted uh, with some kind of angry tweet. Um, now, sometimes those tweets were no more uh, vicious than anything else you might read on the internet, you know, calling someone fat or calling them a slob. But at some point it kind of turned and, and, and those tweets became more targeted and more violent, things like I wish you'd stop breathing or threatening to send certain people to journalistic hell. Uh, that was a theme he had. Uh, it was at that point that I think people stood up and took notice because th these tweets weren't just calling names anymore. They were calling out specific people and talking about acts of violence. Did you fear for your safety? Um, I think everyone at one point or another thought that uh, Mr. Ramos was was not uh, balanced and, and so and so did consider themselves at, at least at risk. Um, I didn't show up in his Twitter feed as much as, as others. Um, so, so I don't think I was as uh, as scared as, any, as as other people were. I do recall one instance where I, I used to serve in the Army, and so at one point one of his tweets referred to me as Sergeant Shirley, and that spooked me because I realized you know he was digging into my past. Yeah, that he had done some research. Now, I understand that, that you knew uh, some of the people who were killed uh, this week. After, you know, a couple of days now, after the immediate incident, what will you remember about uh, those, those members of the Capitol Gazette staff? 
So I, I should correct that because I, I actually didn't uh, specifically know any of the victims. Oh, um, okay. This is obviously a horrible tragedy, and I and I have very fond memories of working with the Gazette, um, hmm. and so I, I know that the, the caliber of people that worked there, uh, and, and and that's what I'll always remember about about my representation and, and my time with them. All right, Zach Shirley, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me.